We have a really special guest with us today at Ask the Expert, who I've worked with maybe more times than any other guest we've had. So I'm going to get that to that in a second. I first want to thank you for joining us for Ask the Expert. Um, this was born out of an idea that another realtor friend of mine and I had years ago where we would do these happy hours called Ask the Expert, and we would invite experts. We would mix it up, and we would invite experts to a location, and we'd uh, offer, you know, uh, light appetizers and beverages, and our experts would wear name tags, and it would say home inspector, flooring expert, landscape architect, whatever it was, classic contract. so many local businesses suffering and nobody really knew the direction business was going to go. And Jennifer and I really wanted to get, Jennifer's my listing and marketing manager. Um, Jennifer and I really wanted to still get good information out to our clients um, and other people as well. And we wanted to support local business. So I have to credit Jennifer with saying, why don't we do ask the expert online and do a different expert every week. And so in the beginning of the pandemic, we did every week and now we're doing every other week. So if you're catching us for the first time, this is purely in support of, of local businesses and getting really good information into the hands of consumers. Um, it's an opportunity to get questions answered and to introduce you to somebody who you can reach out to on your own later and ask your own questions and maybe hire them to help you with something. So I want to thank you for joining us today. Again, my name is Ann McClure. I'm a residential realtor with McInerney Associates, and I'm licensed in Maryland and Virginia, and I've got a couple partners who help me across the river in D.C. If you're watching this from somewhere else in the country, um, there's a lot of great information that applies to you as well, and um, we're always happy to help. So uh, without further delay, I want to get to my expert. So you can see a fellow here on the screen, and his name is Jeremy Provan. Jeremy is a home inspector and he works in the DC metro area in uh, Maryland, DC and Virginia. And um, he's, his company is called ProVantage, ProVantage Inspections. Um, and Jeremy is a member of ASHI and ASHI is the American Society of Home Inspectors. I think it's really good when you hire a home inspector to make sure that they have good credentials. One of the things I like about ASHI and there are certainly other organizations around, but they're their requirements and their credentials are, are stringent. Um, they want uh, well-informed inspectors as members of their association. Is that about right, Jeremy? That is, yeah, there's quite a few hoops to jump through. And Jeremy, um, Jeremy is gonna talk with us today about conducting home inspection for a variety of different reasons. But first I just say again, thank you, Jeremy, for joining us today for Ask the Expert. Thank you, good to be here. We're happy to have you here. And um, for those of you watching, this will be, this is live right now. You can send us questions on Facebook. If we have time at the end, we will ask your questions or we will follow up with you later. And this will be available on YouTube and our Facebook page. Um, we can send you links to it and we'll also send it to Jeremy so he'll have it available. So um, if you can't catch the whole thing or you wanna send it to somebody, we encourage you to do that and check in with us later. Um, so again, Jeremy, thank you for joining us. I always like to give a really quick market update and I'm gonna do it by way of um, personal experience this week. Uh, we, are, we have just completed what the third full week of January um, and we're in the fourth full week. Um, and it, it was, it's been grueling in the DC Metro region. We are seeing multiple offers on almost every home um, we're seeing people waive home inspections, and which we're going to get into. We're seeing uh, people waive appraisals and fine contingency. We're seeing homes sell tens of thousands above asking. Now, in your minds, you say, well, what is this leading to? Uh, but I want to point out one really great thing about this market that wasn't true of the past markets. That is affordability. And that, that is a key component of this market because the interest rates are so low. So when we wrapped up December of 2020, and we compared it to December a year before, even though we had 12 months of appreciation in an incredibly uh, tight, low inventory market where demand was just through the roof and prices went up. Would you believe that December 2020, you could buy a home, the same home for less than that in December 2019, and that is because of interest rates. So that is one fact is greatly impacting 
um, the desire and fueling the demand in this market. And your affordability may still be better now than it was, you know, a, roughly a year ago. So um, we encourage you to, uh, if you want to talk with a professional, um, there are a lot of good realtors out there. I happen to know a really good one. Um, you should talk with a professional because now is a great, great time uh, in terms of interest rates. It's not an easy time, but it's a great time in terms of interest rates. And if you're a seller watching this, it is a fantastic time to sell a home. Uh, so um, think about that. And, you know, we'd love to hear from you if you need help with that. So that's a little bit about the market. I don't want to delay any further because we have a lot of information to get to. In fact, Jeremy and I probably could have made this two, two hours long and kept going. Um, again, Jeremy, thanks for joining us. Nice to see you, Anne. Uh, Jeremy and I see a lot of each other, so. <laughs> um, Jeremy, you know, I mentioned that people are doing waiving home inspections, and they're doing it out of this feeling of necessity, but there are other ways uh, that you can get a home inspection uh, and not waive it altogether. Um, and then there are also uh, different types of home inspections, which we're going to talk about um, Jennifer's made some slides for us, she'll bring up, but I, I want to first say in a fast paced market, there are ways to get a home inspection and there are uh, really good reasons that you're going to want a home inspection. Um, so uh, one of the things we're seeing a lot of people are calling walk and talk or peace of mind inspections. And this is a pre-inspection that you might do before um, you're putting an offer in. And then there are inspections and Jennifer's pulling up a slide, there are inspections that you're gonna do um, after you've ratified a contract. So here is here is the uh, information. You can get a full report or a walk and talk. And Jeremy, why don't we just launch right in and you tell us a little bit about these different inspections and how people are, still have the right to find out about a property even in a tough and very tight market. Yeah, the, the best home inspection really is a full home inspection where we go in there and we're gonna be in there for a number of hours, depending on the size and age of the house. And we photograph pretty much everything that needs to be looked at and some other photos too. And we make notes and we put together a report. And there's a document that the future homeowner can use once they get the house or even before. A lot of times people, at least in the past, they'd be like, here are the items we we're gonna ask the seller to fix. And I always think to myself, like, that home inspection was good value because we're only 30 minutes in and you already covered the cost of the home inspection in terms right. of what, what the seller would fix or credit yeah. anyway. Back when so we could negotiate, idea. right? Exactly. I mean, a lot of people are using it as a negotiation tool. And sometimes people are like, well, it's un unrealistic for everybody to expect this, especially now. But, um, you know, people I hear back, they're like, yeah, we, we got $40,000 from the seller. And I'm like, wow, I mean, did well, that was a good investment in the home inspection. So that's ideal. So you, you, you get the house and maybe the seller fixes a few things, maybe they don't, but you've got this tool, you've got this re report. I have people that will email me or call me and say, yeah, we've been working through the items on your report and we've almost done them all. And that for that me is, awesome. yeah, it is, it's great. It's, you know, we like to we put in the report the things that are really problematic, the things that may become problematic in the future, even minor maintenance, that things could be done to prevent future damage. Uh, so there's the ideal situation, full home inspection, full report, you've got a document, you can work through the items and you have the house ship shape, as I like to call it. In a tight market, well, we're right there right now, and we've been actually really busy. January, you know, most many Januarys are just like pretty much right off the month. You know, that's the time for me to leave town and go away for seven days in the sun someplace if I can, you know, but not this January. Oh. We've been really busy. And a lot of what we've been doing is have been these um, pre-offer inspections. Yes. Sometimes it's like, right, you got an hour, you know, like they're booked. I was at one inspection recently. We were the first ones in, I think at 9 a.m. or something like that. We got there a little early so we could get more of the outside done. And, um, you know, like we got till 10 o'clock and we got to rush through. Luckily, there's two of us. So we're able to uh, cover a bit more territory than probably an individual would. We can actually get inside of stuff, take panels off. Um, what doesn't normally happen on a walk and talk. Um, and I will take photographs for the client and maybe send them as a memory trigger, but I'm requiring the client to be with me 
So like when I'm talking about stuff like this is a problem, we want to give them in a very short amount of time, like a basic idea of the kind of major expenses that they're going to, okay, how's the roof? Is it need replaced or is it good? How's the heating cooling system? Um, what's the electric system look like? Are we looking at major upgrades here or is just a few small things? And we'll go through like that and we want to give them an idea of what they're getting into. So if they want to, they can make an offer, a strong offer maybe, and, and they'll know, yeah, yeah, it's okay. We've got a few thousand dollars of small things, but it's not like 100,000 or 50,000, not a major thing. The house isn't falling down. You know, we don't need a structural engineer to reconfigure the whole roof. Um, so there's your pre-offer inspection. And, and we, they, some of the agents are like scheduling them like, you know, every hour all the way through the day for several days. And then, you know, 50 offers going in or whatever. I don't even Yeah, I, I talked to an agent yesterday who had seven pre-inspections in a row at a yeah. property. Yeah. So we're doing those. And that, and that, you know, the downside of that is that people have to spend the money for inspection. Now, it's less the cost because we're not doing the report. And the report is a lot of work for us. It's a lot of what we do. So they spend, spend a little less, but there's no guarantee they're going to get the house. So it's a, you have to spend that money. But at least it gives them the confidence that they can make an offer and go forward uh, so it's better than nothing um if necessary and i've had people do this as well they'll call me up two months later like, we've got the house we'd like you to come back and do the full inspection oh and that's good that. yeah and i feel bad in a way because they spent twice but at least getting all this great information they're going to know everything about the house and i think peace that's of mind is priceless right well it is and 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 the houses the houses are not cheap whether you're spending you know a two hundred thousand on a condo or you're spending five million on a, a luxury house it doesn't really matter it's still everybody is bringing a lot to it and an ounce of prevention isn't that the saying prevention yeah and it, it's, it's a protection for the buyer um so they don't get into something like a lot of people i guess when they buy a house i know from my experience you know, bringing everything you got and you don't want to all of a sudden turn around and go like wow you know we're maxed out and now we're going to spend fifty thousand. yeah in two years um, so we, we want people to be informed. Um, so that's the basics of what we do mostly is the full inspection, which we prefer to do. And then the walk and talk is like, yeah, worst case scenario, we'll do a pre-offer inspection. We'll help you know what you're going to get into. And then I see here we've got the uh, new construction. So sometimes we'll do a construction monitoring and we'll, we'll start from where they pour the foundation and multiple trips to the site. But the bulk of what we do with the new construction is we're gonna do two inspections, which is the pre-drywall inspection. And I always, when I'm coordinating this, it's a, and it's a fine-tuned coordination with the builder, like I need to be there before you start putting insulation in because I wanna see everything. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and, and we can pretty much see everything uh, before they put insulation. So, and then we'll come back afterwards and we'll do the final. And then we, we, it's more like a regular home inspection where we just check absolutely everything to make sure everything is exactly the way it should be. And we have our record from our previous inspections. So we can go back and some of those things we can still see, did they fix it? Uh, and we're holding the builders accountable. Did you fix that? Oh, look, I see you didn't fix that. Now I'm starting to worry about what they didn't address in the report. But that's, I think that's also a good investment for people. And they also, have, again, they have a document and they know a lot about the house. Um, Jeremy, if I could chime in real quick on the, yeah. on the new construction. Yeah. I have a lot of clients over the years who have said, it's new, what could be wrong? So much can be wrong. And the other thing is I've got um, a family of folks in upper Montgomery County who have sung your praises and said, he has saved us so much money because they had you in and refer referred you to their parents and then the brother and so on. And Jeremy, I mean, you were able to find things more than co covered the cost of your inspection and set the house up for better success as a new home. But I've even seen three times in my career that I can think of, I've seen where the inspector found where the ductwork was not connected. You know, so like now air would have been spilling out between the floors, you wouldn't have been as efficient. And then one time we found a furnace, a gas furnace that wasn't functioning as it should be. It had passed the builder's inspection, had passed the county inspection. Well, you know, that could be a carbon dioxide nightmare. I mean, so I just want to say people watching, new construction, spend the money. It's a few hundred dollars. It is well worth it. And you know what? What's the worst thing that's going to happen? You're going to hear 
wow, you made a great investment and bought a great home. Isn't that worth a few hundred dollars? I mean, you don't want to look at it like I just threw the money away. You want to look at it like I just validated that I made a great decision. So anyway, I just wanted to jump in there because I think sometimes people don't apply that type of logic to the new construction process. It's surprising what you find I'll dissuade uh, you. on a new it build. It, it, it's surprising. Um, we did one recently and the house was three million and um, the, there's a, a standing seam metal roof all the way across the front of the house, the lower, like a porch and other areas and around the back. Yep. And the whole installation was completely problematic. There was so many defects with that. And that was the tip of the iceberg. And, and we, we ended up going back to look at the corrections, the building problems with the siding, so many problems. And um, we ended up going back and we had six pages of small print items to work through to check from our like 80 page report of all the defects. The run of the mill, that was a custom builder. The run of the mill builder will uh, generally do okay. But, uh, and then some people are like, yeah, well, the county's looked at it. And the county guys are pretty good. Each one is specialized, the electrical and uh, inspector, the plumbing and mechanical, and then the framing inspector. And then the guys that come in and do the final, they're, they're pretty good. They know what to look for. But they, they, they do sort of walk through fairly quickly. If, if they can look at all the framing in 10 to 15 minutes. We're, we're looking at framing and we're, we're there for like three or four hours. Right, right. And really looking at stuff. And, and this is just before the drywall goes on. And, and we have metal plates coming off the trusses uh, and there can be weak weaknesses and problems in, in the future that are gonna be covered over, electrical problems that are gonna be covered over. And like you say, yeah, you can have ducts that are separated. And then on the final, weird things like there's no heating source in this room. Where's the register? You know, it's like I remember you found that in one, and we got the builder to bring heat in. Put it in, and 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 most of the time, um, you know, we, we, we're not here to alarm people. We're not here to create stuff that doesn't exist or to fabricate difficulty or anything like that. We're just here to say, well, look, you know, hey, I think this is not the way it should be. And most of the time, the builder will agree. Oh yeah, okay, we'll get that done um because we're, we're not making stuff up we're just saying yeah i don't think that's right so new construction it is important sometimes i'm, I'm doing the pre-drywall and i'm like or even the final i'm like i don't know if i really need to be here this house looks great and then 10 minutes in i'm like good job we're here yeah look at this one house um this is before this is this is probably about 10 or 15 years ago right, when i still um used to go to west virginia uh, to do inspections it's a bit far now so i don't do that but I got to this house and uh, and I'm looking at it's one of these big, huge gables at the front entrance with a double entrance foyer. A nice house, actually. Um, anyway, go and I'm looking at the roof trusses across the front. I'm like, no, no, I can't be seeing that. I'm like, it can't be real. And I look closer. I'm like, yeah, really? So the, the whole roof, the, the roof trusses are, are brought in by a crane and they landed on the front and rear wall. And all the way across the front wall, they had these joist hangers. And the rule with the joist hanger is that every hole needs a nail. Otherwise, it doesn't meet the structural integrity, the design strength. And there was like one nail in each of these joist hangers all the way <laughs> across. Oh my gosh. The weight of the roof, that's the whole front of the roof on that thing. And I'm like, how on earth did that happen? Of course, what happens is there's a guy on a crane, there's a guy with a walkie-talkie maybe, and there's a guy up standing on this wall they've just built. like. Bring it in, bring it in. Okay, drop it down here. And he's just tapping it with a hammer to get it in the spot. He puts up one joist hanger, one nail, maybe one on each side. Just We'll just get them in position. And we'll use that just to kind of hold them in place. And then we'll come back later, as soon as they're in, and we'll get those nails in quick before it all falls off. And I'm like, this was like the day before they're coming in to insulate and, and two days before the drywall and the builder's like ready to move on. And I'm thinking like, that whole roof is just gonna collapse and I'm like, people could die. <laughs> so I'm like, sometimes I'm there, I'm like, nah, I don't know if I really need to be. And then I go like, wow, <laughs> it's a good job we're here. Yeah. Uh, so you never know what to expect. I, I think they've got a little better. That was probably a, a, a back in 06 when they were building like crazy. They couldn't build them fast enough. And maybe they it's well spent money. Jerry, so. let's, let's talk to the sellers or existing owners who might be watching yeah. or they're helping their parents sell a house they've been in for 30 years. Yeah. And I just want to touch on it briefly because we have so much other good info, but yeah. own a home, right? And maybe yeah. they're nervous. What if there are things we can't see? Or what if 
something happened and we we're just so used to walking around here we don't even see it anymore we don't realize it can you talk to doing inspections for existing homeowners maybe looking for safety issues deferred maintenance just it's been a while since someone looked at our house i think the bulk of those that we do are, are people who are preparing to sell and they want to get everything fixed before the sale so that there's less and it makes it easier some people it's kind of like i don't know people some people maybe care more you know it's like there's some people that are selling a car like i don't care i just sell it some people are like you know what i'm selling this car i want to make sure it's working perfectly before i sell it and i think right. that's nice um and so some people want to inspect the house before they sell it and then there's other people like we've been living here for five or six years and i had a few people um especially when in 2006 when the market was going very fast like we bought the home inspection, we never had a home inspection, we just bought the house. And they call me up and say, we've been here for a year and there's a couple of things we're not sure about. And we'll go in and inspect it after they bought it. And I think there'll be some of that going on now because if some people are waving home inspection completely, not a good idea. But um, so we do, when people are living there, and then the other type of inspection that we do when people are already living there is uh, people who bought the house from the builder, assuming that they didn't really need it because the builders like yeah this is perfect and the county guys have signed off of it and they've been there for a year and all of a sudden there's water leaking through here and this room's not getting warm and whatever it is they're starting to see problems that they didn't notice at the, when when their house was being built so we, we do those at the the ones where people someone's been yeah. living for 40 years uh, a little more difficult for us because we're like climbing over furniture and and moving stuff to see behind the wall, you know. Right. For us, if the house is at least tidy, and then it's even easier if it's empty, because then we see absolutely all of it. Uh, and then. Okay, yeah. guys. So I just heard Jeremy say, "Tidy up your house before you have him do an inspection." If you've been there 30, 40 years, <laughs> we'll work with whatever we got, but it <laughs> makes it easier for us. Um, got it. Um, well, Jeremy, yeah. I, Jennifer did a really, really good yeah. graphic of what you look for in a home inspection. So I want to. Mm -hmm that um, mm -hmm. and you know there are all kinds of points around a house so this is yeah. this is a fantastic graphic if you want to speak to this for a minute yeah actually people people will call me on the phone and say what do you look at the home inspection and i try to explain it but in reality i could say it in one word which is everything yeah and um we were, we're really interested in everything because one thing can affect another so i like this i like this illustration here because it does sort of people a lot of times people get to the home inspection and we sort of meet in the driveway and everybody just like walks straight in through the front door. And I'm like, well, I got like 45 minutes yeah. on the outside of this house. Um, so we're really interested in the, the grading slopes, the walkways, is the driveway settled? Is the walkway settled? Now the step height's too high. You know, your aunt's gonna come over. That step height's supposed to be seven and three quarter inches. Now it's 10. Your, your 84 year old aunt's going to come over and trip on that step and get <coughs> into it. So uh, everything matters. And then, okay, so the driveway sloping down a little bit towards the house where it comes up the side of the house doesn't look like a problem. But in reality, every drop of water that hits that driveway is going to run down, end up migrating through the basement wall and have moisture in the basement, deterioration to the wall over a long period of time. And then you look at siding and trim. What is that effectively? And then the roof shingles, it's a bit like your hat, your coat, your scarf, your gloves, your boots. These things are there to protect the structural integrity of the house. So if your trim is starting to rot out, that's only a little thing. It's like, hey, it could be a $50 fix or a $100 fix. Um, but if water keeps going through that rotted trim, now it's getting to the framing, now it becomes a structural issue. So we, we like to get everything in there the, the the big and the small everything because it might be a small thing but a small thing now will over time develop sure. so it, you know, we're going to get us to some of those photos because yeah. you sent us some really good photos from real cases which um i know guys we try to make a commitment to 30 minutes ish uh we might mm -hmm. go longer on this one but jeremy um, also, could you touch on things where, even though you look at everything, where um, a buyer should expect to bring in a specialist, you know, swimming pools and yeah, yeah. and I think Jennifer's got a graphic for us there too, so. Yeah, we, I, I know that there are some home inspectors that do it all. 
And there was a point in, in, in my home inspection where I pretty much did it all. But, um, and I was certified for all of those things, septic inspections, water testing, and uh, all kinds of things. But I actually prefer now, I think it's better if they get uh, an independent pest inspection. That's a second set of eyes. And plus, yeah. I, I think we talked to Jennifer earlier about it, and it's actually important um, the, if, if, if a home inspector does pest inspections certified, he's probably going to know what he's doing and he's going to find a pest inspection, he's going to hand that to the seller. They're still going to have to pay for a pest inspection because the pest guy is the one who treats. He's not going to treat based on somebody else's report. He's got to do his own report and then treat. So you might as well just bring in someone into the second pair of eyes and it's not an expensive inspection. As far as swimming pools, I've come round to the belief that it's much better that the, put, the people who work on those things and repair them on a regular basis are the best people suited to inspect a swimming pool. Because they're like, they, they see these problems all the time, like we do in a way, with other items. And so they know what to look for, know what to expect. Like, you know, the last 10 houses, the last 10 swimming pools, this prop thing was happening. Let me see if this is happening on this one. So it's swimming in, independent pool company is your, is your people to get to inspect the pool for sure. And then chimneys. We do, there's a chimney association has like sort of three qualities. I think it's A, B and C. I never know which way around it goes, but we do a very basic. We look in the firebox. We try to look up the chimney a little bit. We look at the chimney crown. Let's see if we get Jeremy uh, and so we'll have a some information about that. <laughs> But we're not looking all the way down through the whole thing and these guys should i think on a camera all the way down and chimney inspection is important because it may only be 180 200 dollars or something like that um, but you can often come out of a chimney inspection with ten thousand dollars worth of work that needs to be done so i think it's a good investment whenever the chimney oh and that one speaks directly to safety doesn't it well it totally does because you can get carbon monoxide leaking into the house and then a chimney that hasn't been maintained or looked after or cleaned can also become a fire hazard. Um, the number of different problems with that. And then it's a lot of uh, problems with uh, just reduced energy efficiency, water, uh, air leaking from the house through the, the chimney. And then HVAC is, I would say it depends. And I think there's some realtors, and I think you're included in this sometimes, you see a system and you just look at that and you know that is an antique. And you, you, you might bring in somebody and suggest to your client, you know what, you should probably find, get someone to find out about this a specialist. We're not specialists, we're generalists. Right. We know something about everything, but we don't know everything about everything. Um, <laughs> now, if the, system, it. <laughs> yeah, if the system's five years old and we're gonna look at it, we'll, we'll see problems. Um, you know, yesterday I was in a house and there the, is a sealed flue gas furnace, high efficiency. There's a little drip from the vent, which means one thing it means is the vent, it could be leaking. So it may be leaking carbon monoxide, but it's also dripping a very acidic condensate into the unit, starting to rust the box out. The safety cutoff switch, see it a lot, been bypassed. So we, we're pretty good at that, um, you know, based on many years of experience and plus like sitting through hours and hours and hours of lectures by people that do that. Right. Day. Okay. So we know a lot about that, but um, sometimes, especially if there's multiple systems, it's not a bad idea. Actually, when we bought our house, the systems looked terrible and we brought in an HVAC guy to look at them all and give us the bottom line, like what's it going to cost to square this away? Um, so that's actually not a bad idea. Not as important, I think, independently as the chimney and the swimming pool and the termite, but it comes in just behind it, I would say. And sometimes it's definitely worth the money for that as well. I'm going to ask Jennifer to pull up some of the photos from real home inspections, but while she does that, I'm going to add that I often tell my own clients, a home inspector can see maybe I'm estimating, this is my estimate, not an industry stat, but two thirds of all issues because we can't pull back the floor coverings. We, you know, occasionally we can lift up a corner of a carpet in a closet or something, but we can't pull up the floorboards. We can't open up the drywall. So yes, I mean, in a, a few senses, it's peeling back the layers of an onion. Um, you know, home inspector will tell you what he can see, but you should fully expect there will be other issues. There just are, that's home ownership. Yeah. So Jeremy, you sent us these photos and because we're running yeah. on time, let's just pick 
a couple, we've got two or three slides like this. Let's just pick a couple and say what's going on here in maybe just a few seconds. And so we can get to a couple more of these. Okay, yeah, very briefly, top left and, and the middle one there, those two. Um, I, I, showed, I got to the house and look at the outside. And immediately I'm like, this is going to be a problem. I'm sure this is going to be leaking. We got a, somebody built a porch or a front room actually on top of what used to be a concrete slab. Just put the wall right on top. And I'm like, no matter, no matter how much cork you keep throwing on that, sooner or later, water's going to come under the wall. As soon as we go through the front door, there it is, water coming under the wall. Uh, so, I guess so, lucky it had been a rainy day, right? Um, I don't, it wasn't particularly rainy, but I, I could see that. I'm not sure how damp that was, but oh, maybe okay. it, rained in, it wasn't totally wet, but it was all of the- Damp indicators. enough. Yeah, you could see that this was a regular thing. Uh, I think one side was fairly damp. Uh, but it does help actually some people are like oh it's terrible it's raining i'm like you know what that's the best let's get a rainy day because we'll yeah. find the vulnerabilities um when it's really really raining and then uh, i don't know which order you want to go to um oh so. i like the lower left because i want to talk about yeah. great because this yeah. is you people don't pay enough attention to yeah we never want to see the the siding covered with grade or mulch we really want to see we, I, we really should have a six to eight inch gap at the bottom of the siding where you can see some part of the foundation wall or the slab before the grade starts. If you bring the siding right up, uh, bring the grade right up to the siding, you're going to trap moisture, very easy to termites to get up in there. We can have rotted framing and that's a, a problem that will develop over time. So we're going to recommend adjusting the grading so it's below the siding and also make sure it's sloping slightly away from the house. Um, yeah, quite quite common really but um and that that ugly lower right hand corner that's a sump pump that's actually working even though you would look and think my god this has to be replaced right yeah I, 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 that's actually okay we, we actually you know I'll, even though it's not really required or anything like that i'm going to put a picture of a sump pump in the report anyway um even if it's functional because it's sometimes people will call me up and ask me a question and i want to be able to go back to the report and, and, and look and be able to explain things to them and I'm yeah. not going to remember it. Um, Jennifer, one can thing you I could do here, I could adjust the float a little bit. I think that it's on a wire, on a piece of metal, and it's at an angle. It floats at an angle. It may not go up and down as it should. We want that to be really straight, so it will go up and down. That was probably okay. the only thing I might have mentioned on that particular one. Yeah. You can see it's been working, so. <laughs> yeah, it has. Little workhorse sump pump there. Jennifer, <laughs> the next slide for us. Um. Mm. Oh, yeah, so we've got. Yeah, older houses, top left there, we've got some galvanized steel water supply lines. They've been there for a really long time and they're definitely rusting on the inside. So you get up in the morning and like, I'm going to make some coffee, and you fill the coffee thing with water and it's already brown because <laughs> the water's been sitting there overnight uh, and it's full of rust. And I don't know how much iron is good for you. I know you need some, but I don't know if you need that much. Yeah. Um, and they're corroding and they're going to leak and they probably should be replaced and you ought to know that uh, and that's only going to happen if we're going to have this in the 30s and the 40s maybe some of the 50s um, the one on the upper right is kind of scary that um this is interesting because that's where the service entrance electric comes into the electric meter and um very interesting thing happens there's conduit that that conduit the bottom of the picture is sort of pla uh, plastic at one point was just right up in there and as the grading settled over time the backfill it dragged down the conduit with it now we've got an opening in the conduit which we don't want and plus we're seeing the exposed conductors which we don't want either so we're going to have to make a repair right there and only an electrician should touch that um so that's an important this, this, repair. this is sort of home ownership 101 right it's like water and live electricity don't <laughs> <laughs> not very well <laughs> And then, you know, when I was looking at these photos, I was like, oh my gosh, what is that in the <laughs> left? What a mess. It's like, yeah. it's like a mess, mess. But as you said, that's that's a good example of something that's not pretty, but actually fine. That's a trick photo of that. Yeah, I, I looked at that and I thought, yeah, there actually there's nothing wrong with that. They, they, they took out a really old fuse box and they put in a new electric panel and that now becomes a junction box. It's a junction box. It has twist connectors. It's accessible. It meets all the requirements. Nothing wrong with it. But sometimes people are like, oh, I got to look at that. And I'm like, that's okay. So it's about um, perspective here. We want to 
show people like this is a problem and this is not a problem uh, sometimes people are like look at that crack I was in one the other day little cracks on the ceiling around the stairs and they were ready to bring in a structural engineer actually um, I think Jennifer has a good photo that will go with talking about cracks next oh, okay anyway they they um I was able to to say, you know, you really don't need a structural engineer. This is very typical. The framing is shrinking a little bit as it dries out. And um, in fact, it was a yeah roof truss uplift right there. Um, oh, also oh, kind oh, of common. Yeah, so this common. was a little bit about cracks, but we can, I like the one with the um, the bowed roof truss. And then you were just yes. talking about uplift. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, yeah. People, sometimes we'll find people, people will be very scared of, of, um, you know, they've got some crown molding on the second floor. Maybe not. Maybe you just see the second floor hallway ceiling. There's a little crack along the top where the wall meets the drywall. And people are, can be terrified of these cracks. But in fact, it's a very common thing. Roof truck, uh, us, roof, roof, roof trust <laughs> uplift. Tongue twister. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, and the, the simple uh, remedy for that actually is crown molding. And the crown molding is supposed to be attached to the ceiling and not really to the wall so it kind of moves up and down with the ceiling and then it's not that much but that's a simple repair there are other repairs but more complicated but that's okay it's going to do that the roof is going to kind of move I often say well if you had a still photo time frame thing going on you'd almost see the roof kind of doing this I mean I'm exaggerating but the yeah. it's all wood and the framing materials are going to expand and contract and that happens in the house as well you know, you're talking earlier about um, like floors we can't see under the floor, we can't the drywall, but sometimes the floor we can see, you know, we can see the floors bowing and is that excessive or okay? People are like, why is there a lump right here? I'm like, well, that's where the wall is underneath the structural wall. And so the floor will come down like this. And then there's like this hump and it goes down in the next room. Um, so we, we like to try to explain to people what's going on. So they could be suitably alarmed <laughs> by things that they should be alarmed about right. and then not be alarmed by things that are normal sort of progression of the house's age. Roof spreading right here. I'd be fairly alarmed about this. It's great for us because these illustrations that you see here, we have a catalog of a couple of thousand of these. And then sometimes you look at these, you're like, wow, I've never seen that, but I've actually seen this. And um, it's sometimes you're looking at stuff and you go, Oh, that looks strange. I mean, look at that. And then it takes a while to put it all together. Um, and then you go back outside and you see this. And, you know, it is sort of joining together the clues because a few different things that may appear to be unrelated, once you realize they're related, you can understand the big picture. So they always talk about micro approach and macro approach. So we like to go through the house Practically, I know some homes better have, have that logo like a magnifying glass. And we, we like to do that. We like to go through with the micro approach and get down into the details of everything that's going on. But we also like to step back and look at the whole picture and see what's so going on. Yeah, it's great. You are um, in the bottom right, or mm. I guess you show a, yeah. a so, bowed roof truss, right? Yeah, so, so I, I see three photos along the bottom here. I don't know if you yeah. see those. But uh, the one in the middle is very badly bowed. And uh, sometimes if uh, like people are like, well, it's the second layer on the roof and that's okay. And I think like code wise or theoretically you can have your wrinkles, you can add another layer. And I think you're even allowed to add two, <laughs> but it's just not a good idea. If you're changing your roof, pay the extra couple hundred, have it peeled off and start from fresh. First up, the shingles don't lie very flat. And the, if you ever lifted a packet of shingles, they're like 70 pounds for a packet, that's thick and yeah. very heavy. And you add all that extra weight and then you can throw in four feet of snow and now you're really compressing the trusses. A little humidity maybe is gonna help that wood to bow. A bow like this, then you look at the bottom right there, that metal gusset plate, truss plate connector, the truss is bowing and therefore the wood is gonna, the, the plate's gonna peel off of there. And then we can have our roof. I, I've been into houses where I look along the roof and it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all in a row, all bowing, all those those plates. All we need now is four feet of snow and that roof is boom. And every winter you always see it on the news, you'll see a house in Vermont, roof collapsed, you know, you always see those. I always see them anyway, I don't know why. 
Your it's, reticular um, activator is up, so you notice them. So, I do actually, yeah. Jeremy, I, I don't want to stop yeah, because yeah. we have so many good examples, but I don't want to drag this too much longer because of people's time. Oh, yeah. Okay. Watching. So, yeah. This, this I had some other questions. Well, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Carry on. This is Jeremy's contact information. And um, I, I think Jeremy's a very good reasonable home inspector. When I say reasonable, there are people who I think try to sell things and there are people who I think are more interested in informing you and helping you with logical and reasonable solutions. And I think Jeremy falls into that category. He, he doesn't use scare tactics and he's not lazy and bypassing things and claiming it's an insurance reason. Um, so if you need an inspection for whatever reason, pre-inspection, you've been in your house 30 years, you know somebody else who needs a safety inspection, um, remember there's so many ways you can utilize an expert like Jeremy and um, reach out to him. I, I think he's a valuable resource. I know he'd be very happy to answer uh, questions from uh, you know viewers who have them. I don't know if we got any questions, but because we're out of time, if we did, uh, we'll be sure to answer those uh, later. I, I wanted to get to, because we've had some interesting ones, some of the things we've seen together, but maybe we can do a part two sometime or something. <laughs> Uh, or get, you know, we can do ask the expert and ask people for their questions and have you on. It might be I just, fun. I just uh, remembered one of those ones this morning. Um, remember a townhouse? And, and we got in and I was like, there's something weird about the basement floor. I was like, it was you and me? Around the edges. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was a really nice uh, couple. I think he was a steel fabricator or something. Anyway. Oh, yes. And it took me a while. Remember that? I was like I looking at the little gap at the baseboard. I'm like, now, wait a minute like there's a the floor beneath the baseboard is like lower than the rest of the basement floor it took me 15 minutes to or 20 minutes to kind of get a picture of what was going on i mean at first i saw like a, like the floor had been patched in the next to the furnace and that was like visible and then it, it I, I spent a while kind of figuring that out and eventually i, I realized that the whole basement because the, the it was just the whole floor had dropped <laughs> an inch or two something like that I found that really interesting. So sometimes it takes time and um, we don't like to rush. A lot of houses are fairly straightforward, but if there's something unusual going on, it's time to figure it out. And uh, yeah. sometimes in the early days when I first started doing this, I would have all these different ingredients for the report and I'd start working in the night and then I'd wake up the next morning and maybe finish it off. I'd wake up at four in the morning and go like, I got it. <laughs> it's like I put the those two things together. Right. Realized what, yeah, it was yeah. like I realized what was going on. Um, so it doesn't always come to you straight away. Um, we could probably deliver our reports on the same day. It's technically possible, and I've done it sometimes. But I've realized now it's almost like a cheese or a wine. You know, it's like not bad if you just let it just <laughs> mature a little bit. We prefer to send it out the next day because it gives us a little time to put everything together so we can understand what's really going on and uh, yeah. every now and then. Well, and some of these problems are big and you want a lot of thought to go into them, right? So yeah, for me, and, and, thanks uh, for today. Thanks, Sandy, I've enjoyed it. It's, it's nice to see you. And, you too. Uh, <laughs> we always it's have fun. fun. It's, it's actually fun to do these and I learn a lot. I always learn a lot from you. And, um, and I'm really glad you're with us today. We're gonna do another Ask the Expert in two weeks. So if you guys saw something here today, you want to revisit, again, it will be on my Facebook page. It will be on YouTube. Jeremy will have it. You have his contact info. If you misplace it, you can always reach out to me or Jennifer. We'll put you in touch. And I hope you'll join us again in two weeks for another Ask the Expert. Um, we've got a couple good ideas lined up. So uh, we hope to see you then. Don't keep us a secret. If you know somebody who needs a good realtor, I hope you will tell them about us. Uh, thanks so much for joining today. And thank you, Jeremy and Jennifer. Thank you, Rod. Take care. Have a good day. Bye. You too.